Welcome, everyone. And uh, once again, this is episode three of our SD Times Live micro webinar with HCL Software. Uh, today's topic is going to be creating tests from design mockups. And once again, with me is Martin Lequier. He is the HCL One Test product manager. Uh, and uh, just to recap, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, in uh, part one, we looked at why performance uh, is so important and how to test your application uh, you know, for performance using automation. Uh, part two looked at uh, data generation for testing, and we got an introduction to the uh, soon to be renamed HCL DevOps Test Hub, which looked uh, very easy to use. Uh, and today, of course, we'll be talking about uh, you know test creation from design mockups. So Martin Lequier, take it away. Thank you, Dave, for this introduction. So yes, today we will be discussing around this nice uh, feature that we will be delivering by the end of this year. Um, so it's not shipped yet. It's something that it's works in progress, but uh, I think we should. It, it's good, you know. It's really nice to be able to um, discuss this before it goes out. Um, it's all about yeah test creation from from design. Let let's discuss a little bit more about what it is. Um, so we saw that nearly all of the organizations involved in web developments are doing mockups before they start developing. Some of them are using very high fidelity mockups, for example, using Figma uh, as tools. Um, and some others are doing more rough mockups. Um, and some even they are making, you know, pictures of um, a paper, a uh, handwritten design, I would say, or taking a picture of a whiteboard and then using this as a basis. Um, so what we what we've done in the in this capability we've we've allowed users to inject um, image into the system whether they are high fidelity mockups or whether they are even handwritten design whatever um, you can inject those um, into our tool and we will analyze these pictures and and find out a model of this right so it's an AI powered uh, engine that is basically operating in the background. Um, generally speaking, it's it's something that is again trying to mimic what does the human eyes and the human brain um, in their object recognitions of what is a button or what is a text and things like this. So it's it's a neural network which is uh, associated with a fast OCR engine and operates in the background. In the background, um, we have trained this model. Um, on object recognition controls and recognition within user interfaces. Um, so lots of screens have been scanned and analyzed um, so that we are trying to identify a button as a button, a drop down as a drop down, and exactly the same way than the human brain and the human my human eye would would, would do indeed, right? Um, so we scan we scan images. Um, whatever it is, and, um, and so we, we get a model from this, and this model can be used to generate a test. Um, that's what I am going to quickly uh, show you as a demo. Um, and I will explain you, so what this test that has been made on the design, how we can migrate it to the real application when the real application is actually, actually existing, right? So we are, pushing the uh, testing activity up to the left, right? Uh, maximizing the shift left testing. Um, you can start creating your test even before the application exists because we're taking just mockups um, to start with, right? So yeah, let's, let's switch to the demo. So this happens in the application configuration of HCL one test UI component. Let me switch this off for now. Um, and so what I can do here is create a new web application. For example, I would it would be something like um, something.com. I don't know, something like this. All right. And if I switch to the design tab here, I can upload some screenshots wherever they are. 
for example, I have this login page and I can add this into the system. So what I just did is input a screenshot into the system for my application. And here is the design editor. And you can see that in this screen, the, you know, that has been identified as an input text, and this has been identified as a button and all that sort of things, right? And and so what what, what I what I've done, I've used this um, on my application. If I go back to this switch editor, I have added two other uh, screens because this is the login page. Once I log in into the system, I arrive on this landing page, which is supposed to give me the list of projects uh, I that I I have access to. And I will click on that new project button and that new project button will give me the third screen, which is a sort of wizard allowing me to um, create a new project from there. So, okay, here is my design. Um, I think I have enough things here um, to generate a test from there. So that's what I'm going to do now. I switch to here, say that I want to record a test call it my test, my T. So generally speaking with HCL1 test, I can create a test by recording lots of different clients, browsers, applications, sub GUI, whatever. So I'll choose here to record against an application design. So I'll select this one and click on finish. And then I am brought back to this virtual client screen. And here I can say I want first to click into the username, enter my user ID. I want to click on the password here, provide uh, my password here. And I want to click uh, on the login button. And then that will take me to this uh, screenshot where I simply want to click on that new project button. And that new project button would take me to this wizard where I could click in the name, um, provide a name for that new project that I want to create and ask for uh, the creation of my project. And then I believe I'm done with this test, right? So I'll stop recording and go back to the tool, generate my test from here and ask for my test, please. Um, I'm here. So what I am seeing here is basically the same steps than the one, I, one I've done. So what you can see here is when you click on these different steps that are composing the, the test, they relate to the, um, to the design, right? Um, I have to change little trick this quickly uh, like this field. And I also have to click on the label here, select the label. All right. And so this is a test which has been recorded against the design, right? So now I have to imagine that the development um, has started and the application is now available. So maybe I can simply run this test. And when I run this test, I will ask the execution engine to, you know, this checkbox collect data to update the test steps, meaning that in case it doesn't find the real control that it should, it should find, it will look around, um, see any other candidates, good candidates, um, to apply the same um, actions and it would be chosen, right? So as you can see here, Chrome is launched, it connects to my application. So I'm not touching the browser here, the, the, the test execution is doing the, that work. So it should log, log me inside, provide the password. Now we should click on login button. Here is my landing page ask for a new project and click on the project five and I'm done. Creation happened, the test is finished now. So 
that was cool, right? Because it was executed against the real application. So now, when my test is over, which is the case now, I can ask, I can have a look at the report first, you know. So here are the steps, they are all looks green. Um, you know, you have details here with the screenshot that was here. But when you, for example, look at this one, click on button whose content was login. It says the object, the object was not found. The action has been performed of the most appropriate element, you know, which with this pattern, right? It sounds good to me, right? So I can go back to this test, and which is still recorded against the um, the um, the design. But I can say, give me, show me the differences. And orange pieces are the one that, you know, they. The, the the system say this button, I didn't find this button, but I found this one, which sounds good. And I say, yes, please update, right? And as you can see now, the screenshot from the real application has been placed in my test. And so what I can do now is simply update all the test steps, right? Because they are all okay. I'm all okay with the modifications. And now I am having my test against my real application. As you can see, all the screenshots here have been migrated. So this is the overall story. You know, I have been creating a test from the wireframe, from the mockups, um, very early in the uh, development cycles. And then I've been um, recording a test scenario, uh, associating those mockups together. And then this test has been placed into HTML1 test UI. I run this test from there, and I've been able to update this test with the real application. So now it's become usable um, directly. I think that the capability will be um, will be pushing this into the next release of our uh, HTML1 test UI product, um, which will come in the next uh, de December. That's it for now. Um, lots of other things to tell, but I would think that, yeah, it's, it's a good starting point. Excellent, Martin. Thank you so very much, uh, folks. So this wraps up our SD Times Live micro webinar series on performance testing and other testing bits from HCL One Test. Uh, all of these episodes will be available on the sdtimes.com website uh, under the uh, webinars tab. Uh, and you can watch it over and over again uh, to your heart's content. So once again, I want to thank uh, HCL for uh, sponsoring this uh, micro webinar series. And thanks to Martin Lequier for great presentations. Uh, and I'd like to, of course, thank you, our uh, listeners, uh, for joining in uh, for this uh, great uh, series. So until the next one, I'm Dave Rubenstein, Editor-in-Chief of SD Times. So long for now. Thank you. <laughs>